या देवी सर्वभूतेशु मात्रे रूपेण संस्थिता नमस्ते शय नमस्ते शय नमस्ते शय नमो नमः I bow to that divine mother who is the mother of us all. There is only one mother of the universe, and she can be called all sorts of different titles, but it's the same mother. She is your own mother, loves you more deeply than your own mother could possibly love you. Love you because your mother, first of all, loves you because you were hers. The divine mother loves you impersonally. There is no thought of ego. There is only the wish to help you. But the mother sometimes can scold you. Yes, the same nat- mother nature gives us rain and thunder and lightning, and gives us be beautiful raindrops, soothing raindrops and lovely sunshine. Mother is all these things, but behind all those sometimes terrible experiences of the world. The Divine Mother is always there saying, use these experiences to know me. I would like to read to you from Yogananda's Conversations with Yogananda. This is his book, but it's I who wrote it. He said, the other day I was looking at the picture of my mother. I saw the Divine Mother in her face. She was looking a little stern. I said, Divine Mother, why don't you smile? And the photograph itself smiled. All of you know that picture. It shows my mother, in fact, looking fairly serious. I then said to Divine Mother, there's so many wonderful souls around me, Mother. Please bless them. Deepen their desire to feel your love in their hearts. The Divine Mother blessed a gathering at which I I, I was present by appearing to the Master's inner gaze. After a time she left, giving as her reason for doing so, the fact that in the hearts of some of those present there were too many desires lurking. I can read the story, I can write it into a book, but how wonderful it was to be there and to see it. It was as if the Divine Mother was palpably present. I remember him once saying, Oh, you're so beautiful. That radiant love and beauty, that's what he was communing with. And he made her so real. And he said that God blessed this one and that one. And to my shock and surprise, he also said that he blessed me in a certain way that I don't want to repeat right now, but it was certainly wonderful. God loves you as his own and her own. And then... At the end, I've read it in cold words, but it was so beautiful when he said, Oh, don't leave. Oh, why are you leaving? Is it because I understand it's because of the desires of these people? Oh, don't leave. Don't go away. That Divine Mother is always there. You know, there's this beautiful story of the great Saint Ram Prashad of Bengal, and he was a devotee of Divine Mother, and uh, one of my one of his songs that my guru used to love to sing, Amon din ki hobe matara, Amon din ki hobe matara, Jabe tara 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 bole, Dono yone ba beye porbe dhara. Amon din ki hobe matara, and so maybe it was that song he was singing, but his little daughter came, and said to him, Daddy, who are you singing to? And he said, oh, I'm singing to my divine mother, but she's very naughty. I keep calling, and she won't answer. And the little girl said, well, Daddy, if you, if you keep calling and she doesn't answer, why do you keep calling her? And she laughed gaily and ran away. That evening when he came in from working on their fence there, he told his wife that, their daughter had come and helped him with fixing the fence. And the mother said, oh, that's not possible. And uh, she said, she's over on the other side of the village. And so when the daughter came home, Ram Prashad said to his little girl, weren't you with me helping with the fence? 
Oh, no, Daddy, I was with my friends. You can ask any of them. Yeah. God comes to you in many forms and sometimes quite openly, but you don't know him. Ram Prashad, who was a devotee of Divine Mother, also didn't know him. But God is always watching, always watching to see. And the more you love him, the more you see that he is there. I've seen this happen so many times. You know, many years ago, it was in 1972, and I wanted to, because I felt Divine Mother wanted me to go back to India. Certain enemies of mine had reported to the government that I was a CIA agent in disguise and a Christian missionary in disguise, and people without knowing me took this seriously and uh, didn't allow me to have a visa to come back to India. And after 10 years, I had built Ananda, and uh, I wrote to the home ministry here, and I said, look, if I were a CIA agent or a missionary, I surely would not have built up this whole community at great expense, bought all this land, attracted all these hundreds of people just as a front. I said, please give me a chance at least to come and talk to you. So they did. And of course, as soon as they met me, they knew this was ridiculous. And so that ban was lifted. But I felt the Divine Mother at this time wanted me to go back. Two weeks before I was supposed to go back to India, I was driving my car. We live up in the mountains. I was driving it down to into San Francisco, and all of a sudden the rod broke, or whatever it is rods do. I'm really, I'm afraid, not a mechanic. But I did know that I would have to get rid of this car. It was time it had seen its last days. And I needed to trade it in for another one. But I thought, well, but I've got a certain amount of money saved that people have given me in various ways. And um, if I get a new, even a new used car, I can't go to India. So I was, I didn't have any temple to go to, any church to go to, any place to sit quietly. So my temple had to be a restaurant. And I was there with some friends and we were trying to discuss as to whether I ought to go or ought not to go to India or ought or ought not to buy a new car. And uh, it's not the best place for an answer, and I didn't, I'm afraid, really get an answer then. So I said to Divine Mother, and sometimes you can pray like this to Divine Mother as you would to your own mother. And I said, Divine Mother, I, my common sense tells me I need a car because I live up there in the hills. You can't do without a car there. But if you still want me to go to India, you're just going to have to reimburse me. I put it to her like that. It's love, yes. But uh, it was a bit of a challenge, certainly. She didn't mind that. And so I put a good down payment on the car and got a decent used car. And uh, this was on a Friday night. Monday morning, the next Monday morning, I got a letter in the mail from someone I had never met, never heard of. And he said, I want you to use this check as Divine Mother wants you to, believe it or not. In America, people don't use the word Divine Mother. How did he do it? I didn't know me. But in that was a check for $1,000, just what I had spent. I'd spent 1100 He gave me $1,000. And using it as Divine Mother wanted me. And so I got to come to India, and I got to be with the different saints here and had a wonderfully inspiring time. But Divine Mother does listen to you. And you don't have to come to her with this holy reverence, oh, great mother of the universe, with quaking your feet for fear that she's going to slap you. She loves you. You're her child. And you can talk to her scoldingly. I remember when I first met Ananda Mai, she gave me her uh, shawl she'd been wearing for five years, and I said, thank you. And she said, would you thank your own mother? And I said, well, yes, we would. In the West, in English, we do say thank you to our mother. But it was so sweet that, that she would ask that question because, on the other hand, you don't have to thank her because she's your own. She just, she's not putting herself out for you. She loves you. It's her nature to want to help you. Love God in that way. Expect the best. Don't think, oh, my God, you're probably not going to do anything to me, anything for me. But anyway, here goes God. Would you please do this? That's not the spirit to do it. 
have the absolute confidence that he is your own, that she is your own, have the absolute confidence that you have his love, and pray to the Divine Mother, naughty or good, I am your child, you must release me. And you will find that no matter how deep your delusion, no matter how strong your attachments, people come to me and say, oh, it's so difficult. Yes, it's difficult. For heaven's sake, why wouldn't it be difficult? You're talking about the greatest prize in the universe, to know God. After all the millions and hundreds of millions and maybe billions of years you've been wandering in this universe and just in delusion, oh, what stupid fools we are. When the bliss that we're seeking is always right with us. Why shouldn't he make it hard? But it's not hard at all. It's that beautiful story of St. Anthony in the desert. And he used to call to Jesus Christ. And Satan kept trying to test him and tempt him and drive him away. And he kept on trying. And one time, it appeared as if the walls of the temple in which he was praying would fall in upon him and destroy him. And with all his force, he cried out just once more to Christ, reveal thyself. And God, in the form of Jesus Christ, appeared to him. And Anthony, in that ecstasy, suddenly, as my guru explained it, he said, oh, I know that state. When you remember all the lives that you've been seeking, and suddenly you find, and he said to Christ, Lord, where were you all this time? And Jesus smiled at this way. He said, Anthony, I was always with you. God is always with you. Don't think that because you turn your back on him, he turns your back on you. He's always there, but he won't answer. Why should he answer if you don't? Uh, call to him. He's very humble also. He's not going to force himself on you. Why is there all the suffering in this world? It's not God who does it. God created the law, yes. I mean, if you have a hot stove, it's not good for your hand to be burned. It'll destroy it. And so he gave us pain. And so you touch the stove and you recoil. And so you know I shouldn't touch stoves. So it is with Maya. So it is with karma. You get bad karma, you get burned, you suffer. God isn't sending you that suffering. You're causing it by going against the law. That's that simple. When you see all the pain and all the suffering that people go through, and some of it is terrible. But you know one thing wonderful about it all? You never find anybody who has ever found God saying, what a scam, what a waste of time, it's not worth it. Every one of them says it's absolutely worth everything I have ever suffered. There is this beautiful Muslim saint, a Sufi saint, Rabia, who was suffering from a great disease at the end of her life, as many saints do, because they take on karma of others. And she had three disciples who were close to her, and they came to her, and one of them said, Oh, well, Mother, after all, <clears throat> he is no true lover of God who isn't willing to suffer for God's sake. She said, this smacks of egotism. And the second one said, well, uh, he tried to correct it. He said, well, he is no true lover of God who isn't happy to suffer for God's sake. She said, more than this even is needed. And then the mother, they all said, what is the right attitude, mother? How should we love God? She said, he is no true lover of God who does not forget his suffering in contemplation of the Beloved. All the pains that you've endured, all the suffering, all the betrayal, all the dear friends and family members and people who have turned against you, who have tried to har uh, harm you, tried to destroy you. How many times does this happen? Everybody thinks, why me? <coughs> I was going to tell, and I got sucked off my subject by myself, my own fault, but I was talking about how I had a fall recently and my eye was all closed up and uh, the surgeon who was working on it said, everybody says, why me, why me? I say, I never say such a thing. It happens. I'm grateful for anything that happens because I know it's something I've probably got to learn. It doesn't matter. 
be grateful for what happens to you. But you will see that the time will come that when you love God enough, it really won't matter. And you know, when a, a person becomes strong, a baby might fall and get a real hurt and be killed by it. A strong man won't be touched by it. So as you grow, sorry, as you grow spiritually, Maya won't be able to touch you. Yes, you will see its howling around you. You will see the storm. But Swami Vivekananda put it beautifully. He said, thank you, God. There was this beautiful song. I wrote a song on it, I should say, but the beautiful story that it's based on is this hermit who would come out in the morning and look at the sun shining on the leaves and shining on the water of the river and just look at this great show of God's. And his way of praying was to clap his hands and say, oh, well done, God. We should congratulate God because the thunderstorm and the sunshine Enmity makes friendship all the sweeter. And when one disciple of my guru said, why did it take so long to find God? My guru said, that is what makes it all the sweeter when he does come. God is there, but he gives you these tests and he puts you through your paces, so to speak, until you know that nothing matters. I only love God. That is what that Muslim saint is saying. When you love God enough, you forget your suffering. It really isn't that important. You know that you're going to leave this body sooner or later. So what does it matter if it's sooner instead of later? It will happen. You're not going to be in this body for very long. It's just like that and you're gone. It would be good to remember that you have a few years in which to find God. That is the reason for your existence. People say, well, why did you make me? Why do I exist? Why this? Why that? There's an answer to all that. Why? God wants you to learn to love yourself in him and to love him in yourself, to see him in everything. And that doesn't mean that when you see somebody suffering, you giggle. That would be ridiculous. Certainly you feel compassion for people's sorrow, but you understand more deeply also that in that suffering, they are getting reminders that this is not their home. And so suffering too, if it were only joy, people would not find God. They would not trouble to seek him. We must be grateful for our pains. As a result of those, every person who comes to that point, it may be just some little experience after you've had many experiences in other lives, just a little experience. And you suddenly remember in your soul, oh, this world gives you that. No, I don't want this world. Remember, she is the mother of us all. God bless you. All your children, mother, call you, knowing not it's you they call. Some through mists of their unknowing, bruised and hurting when they fall, turn away. But who can leave you? You're the mother of us all. If the child forgets its mother, Will she coldly turn away? Wise or foolish, we're your children. Guide us, mother, if we stay. Those whose hearts are torn with anguish lack the power your name to call. Heal their wounds, ma, soothe their sorrows. You're the mother of us all. Heal their wounds, ma, soothe their